guys, this is the GE Home Sentry 8201-101 smoke detector. Now, this smoke detector I've actually been after for a while, and, um, you know I already do have a lot of these square Home Sentry units, but, uh, there are a number of variants out there, um, and I like them all. So, uh, yeah, this is just going to be a quick video about this detector, and, alright, let's get to it. So this smoke detector is the, I believe, the earliest GE Home Sentry unit. Possibly the earliest one that I own, I'm not sure, but this was, I believe it's the very first one that GE ever made. Um, as you can see, it's their older square design, which, uh, with the red button in the middle, unlike the newer design like this, with the rectangular smaller design. Um, but this one is the older design. Um... And notice right here, this one has the battery flag. Um, this is actually a 12.6 volt mercury battery model. It takes the Mallory 304116 uh, mercury battery. Um, and that flag right there, only the 12.6 volt models had that. The 120 volt models didn't have that, obviously, because they didn't have a battery. And when they switched to the 9 volt models, they got rid of the battery flag. So that battery flag is a good indicator. Um, of whether or not you have a 12.6 volt model. So, the unit looks pretty like similar, just like all the other ones on the back here. You can see Made in Ireland sticker right there. But if I open it up, you'll see that the thing about that I like about these GEs is that all the units look basically the same. They're, the covers are all the same and everything, and they all have the button in the middle, but the insides are often vary a lot. So open it up. This one's cover latches are in actually good condition, so it actually does stay closed. If I can get it open. Come on. There. Okay. So if I open it up, you can see this one is clearly an older model. Um, first of all, here's where the battery would go. The Mallory 304116. It is. I did not get it with a battery. I got this one used. Um, but notice it has the older, what, what, what we call the multi-hole sensor, as opposed to the later triple slot sensors. I'll show you an, an example of that later. And it also has the Edwards horn, the Edwards squealer horn. Um, that was what most of these had. I believe they're, the most of them that I've seen that have the multi-hole sensor are always paired with the Edwards horn. But there are a few that I've seen that actually have a delta alarm horn, so those are pretty rare variants. I've also seen ones that have the Kobishi CLB27, but all the ones that I've seen, those are all 120 volt models, and all the ones of those that I've seen have the old later triple slot sensor. So, um, yeah. This model was actually directly uh, preceded by this model right here. This one right here, notice it's bright white, this one wasn't used. This is a slightly different model, it's actually later, but you can see the battery flag. So this one's also a 12.6 volt model. The battery flag on this one is white though with red lettering, whereas opposed to this one it's white or red with white lettering, and it also has a little bit of more information on there. But if I open up this one, you can see they changed it a lot. They made it a lot cheaper, they shrunk the circuit board down. And that's the later triple slot sensor that I was telling you about. And this one also has the black plastic star buzzer. So, yeah. Now, you're probably wondering what this little thing is over here. And what that is, is that's actually the mechanism that uh, triggers the low battery flag. So it's really cool. Now, if you're familiar with this model, this is the H201-201. So this is the 101, this is the 201. This one immediately succeeded this one. Um, if you're familiar with these, the battery flag on this one is simply held in by the battery clip. So when there's a battery in there, the battery flag is held in, and then when you remove the battery, the battery flag uh, flips out. This one is a great deal more complex. You'll notice there's a small box right here, a small silver box that's actually an electromagnet, like a, a, almost like a solenoid actually, um, and this gray box right here. Now what this does is essentially when the battery runs low, uh, when the horn chirps, it sends a pulse of electricity to this electromagnet and triggers it briefly so that it 
flips in and the battery, uh, the spring-loaded battery flag can flip out. So it's a really cool design. And then what you're probably wondering about this gray box is um, this little, there's a little metal tab here that's springy. When you push it, when it's powered and when you push it in like that, it'll make a switch and it'll temporarily pulse electricity to the uh, coil so you can get it, get the battery flag back in without having to mess with the the uh, diaphragm here. So it's a really, really cool design. I think underneath of here, I think is also the sensitivity adjustment because I didn't see it anywhere around there, so I'm pretty sure similar to how it is on the 201 here where the sensitivity adjustment is underneath of this cover. So I'm pretty sure the sensitivity adjustment is under there. Um, so yeah, it's very cool. So now I'll show you the cover. So here's the cover, the information on there. General Electric smoke alarm. This one only says 8201, but it's actually 8201-101. I don't know why they didn't label the 101 on some of these. Sometimes they just labeled them 8201. I don't know why. And if you want to read all that, you can pause it. It does say radioactive material, but it doesn't say how much on there. It does say on the sensor itself, It's this one does contain three micro microcuries. So what I find is all multi-hole sensors typically contain three microcuries and all triple slot sensors contain two microcuries except for the very latest ones like the black plastic ones only contain one or point nine so before we power this one up and test it I've got all the other GE units here and I've also got an ad here this one actually came from a, a YouTube user on here I'll uh, link his channel down in the description, but he gave this ad to me. Um, but this is an ad for the 12.6 volt model. I believe this was put out when GE was actually premiering the Home Sentry lineup of smoke detectors. Um, but you notice that it only mentions the 12.6 volt model. It does not mention the 120 volt model. So I'm guessing that this means that the 12.6 volt model was introduced prior to the hardwired 120 volt models. So, um, I have right here, this was obviously the very first one that they made. Shortly after that, according to the ad, or, or lack of mentioning the 120 volt model, I'm guessing shortly after that they put out the 120 volt AC model. And the reason for that is because if I open this one up, which you actually saw this in my one of my older videos from last year, this one has the exact same Edward Torn and multi-hole sensor. So I'll close that. So these, this one, then that one. And then they changed designs a little bit and they went to the 8201-201. This one, by the way, is model 8202-001. So then they went to the 8201-201, which you already saw the inside of. I'm not going to open it again. And then they still kept the original square design, but they changed the battery because the mercury batteries were made illegal. They were banned for containing mercury, obviously. And they went to this model, the 8201-301, again, keeping the square design, but they cheapened it a great deal. They removed the battery flag, even though the PCB still has a space for the battery flag in there. But I think they did alter the circuitry a little bit so that it would run off a 9-volt battery, but it has the exact same triple slot sensor and the black plastic star buzzer as the 201. And these were made up to the late 70s, I believe, and then sometime in the early 80s or maybe the late 70s, they switched designs completely and they made the model a lot smaller. And they came out with this one, the 8201-401C. And this model was very small. Um, still had a very similar design, though. It was still you know, rectangular, and it had the red test button. Um, and it had the radial, well, in this case, they were actually vents, but on these, they were just lines. Um, but then they, they changed, they kept the, the same triple slot sensor, but they changed from a mechanical horn to a piezo horn. So they did cheapen these a lot, and the circuit board was made a lot smaller. And then from there, they continued to use this design cover, but they uh, switched the sensor to be cheaper. They made the sensor plastic. And they re, uh, sold these to Black & Decker to rebrand. So, yeah. So that's the entire lineup of GE Home Century units that I have. 
um, which is almost all of them. There's still two variations that we know of that I don't have, and that is model 8203-001, which was a the line cord model. It, was, it had the exact same things as the 8202 here, and the 8205-0 which was a, another hardwired model, but it was a little bit later than this one. And it had the triple slot sensor and the Kobishi CLB27 squealer horn. So those are the two models I don't have, but as of now, this is a nice, very nice display of GE, GE's home sentry uh, smoke detectors over the years. So let's put all these aside, the three, four later models. And we're going to focus back on the 101. So I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to... Um, I'm going to attempt to open it up here. Oh, I got it open. Okay. I'm going to power this unit up. Now, um, the 12.6 volt mercury batteries are illegal. They are not made anymore. Um, and the ones that you can buy on eBay are pretty much lo all long dead. So what I've done is I've got one 9-volt battery that's good and one 9-volt battery that's slightly dead. So that gives me around 12, 13 volts. It shouldn't hurt it. I've already tested it with it, so um, it, it should work. So you at least get to hear the detector sound. So this is plus on this terminal. And this one is minus. And you'll also get to see the battery flag in action, too. So when I push the battery flag in, see that? See how the when, I, when it hits that metal tab, the electromagnet di diaphragm goes in? So you can push, and then it comes back out. So that allows you to push it in without, like, messing with that. So, close the cover. Not, I'm not going to snap it in all the way. And we'll test it. Let's try that again. Did the battery come disconnected? The battery thing came disconnected. Okay. That seems like a better hold right there. Okay, let's try that again. So as you can hear, it's pretty high-pitched. I believe it is definitely a lot higher pitched than this one, the AC model, that I made a video of a while ago. But it's a really cool sound. It's definitely the classic Edwards horn sound, that really high screechy buzz. Test it again. It doesn't have very much of a ting after it stops sounding, but it's funny, the beginning when it starts to sound reminds me a lot of that, uh, video by, the old video by the SDX, um, that old Tempasonic TS2 photoelectric detector. When it starts sounding, it makes a similar noise to that. And it also has an Edwards horn, so it makes sense. So let's test it without the cover. Very cool. It's kind of raspy sounding, kind of more raspy than the, uh, the, the 8202 there. But yeah, very cool detector. Let's disconnect it. And I don't know if when I disconnect it, if the uh, and dis uh, bad light's going to pop out. No, it just chirped. But basically when the battery low, the thing pulses in like that. So yeah. So I think that's it for this video. So that is a very nice video on GE's Home Sentry series, the 201.